Welcome everybody to another edition of WCW 2004 here in TW 2020. As it's the night after Great American Bash and we're moving on to Bash at the Beach. But first we've got a pre-show match to shout out things in 2,000 people in Fairfax, Virginia at the Patriot Center. As Chris Harris, Evan Courageous, Romeo Lovernarius, and Tron Sajak defeat Air Paris at Lash LaRue, Dustin Rhodes, and Sabu in 15 8 when Chris Harris pins Sabu with a catatonic. This gets a 62 for the straightforward pre-show match. Sabu gets a 40. Yikes. Uh, Dustin Rose gets a 60. Lashley gets a 41. Eric Paris gets a 63. Sean Zajac gets a 57. Romo gets a 42. Evan Courageous gets a 44. And Chris Harris gets a 67. So yeah. Um, plenty of people sort of on our lower card. Basically on permanent Saturday Night Duty. Who hopefully will get some a little more on our time once we do the split here in a couple. Well actually basically next week. So. Now, actually, time to start out the show, and we start out for the first time, first with some quick Great American Bash stills, uh, showing Booker T, you know, pinning the bookend on Bill Goldberg, Vampiro disappearing, and then we have the Nitro opening, and this little thing gets at 73, and then we have the Nitro opening, and who first has come out, but of course, everybody's great personal friends, Deadpool. Big booze as Morningstar and Macias comes out, you know, the big monster Macias beside Morningstar, and Morningstar cuts a promo saying, Last night... You saw the end of one path. You, you saw the end of one message and the beginning of a new one. You see, what you saw last night was proof that we were correct. Vampiro was always a tool. And now he is gone because he was no of no, no more use to the message. But the message still has a few strings it has to finish up before we move on to total and complete domination. And of course, who we're talking about is... Sean O'Hare and Chris Palumbo. Big face pop for, you know, our do new hot young bay faces. Yes, yes, cheer them, whatever. You see, we've already destroyed Palumbo. We left him for dead. And yes, he's not gone yet, but we're slowly beating him piece on piece. And Sean O'Hare, you talk about being the future of wrestling. But the reality is, the message is clear. You have no future. Boo. So face us and prove what I am saying. Or back away like the cowards you are deep down beyond your bravado. Big Booze has dead to walk away, and it seems like, like Macias and Morningstar, or more Morningstar than Macias, obviously, are challenging O'Hare and Palumbo to a big tag match. Uh, 85, moving forward, Morningstar is really good, Macias is there as a big monster, and yeah, basically, you know, Vampire is gone, but, you know, they really never had a true blow-off to the between O'Hare and Palumbo and Morningstar and Macias. So then, we, we go to the ring for our opening match, as yikes, I forgot to throw in somebody who's actually over here. Okay, this might not be our best match ever, unfortunately. But anyway, in a terrible match, ah, come on, it was a high spot match. Who can be that bad at it? Anyway, Tony Gazina in the second match, and here in World Champions Wrestling defeats Blitzkrieg, Shane Moore, and Yang in 817 when Tony Gazina pins Yang with the flying head scissors. Okay, I'll have to find his actual finisher online and edit that in because. Yeah, uh, he did some flying move. Who knows what, what it actually was, but it was not a flying head scissors. As is, it gets a 41, which is unfortunate. Uh, Cuisine gets a 46, Blizzard gets a 47, Moore gets a 40, and Yang gets a 53. Yeah, fun, fun times. Um, yeah, Blizzard goes off his game, and yeah, like it says, crowd was turned off because, well, look, look, look at these jobbers. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I, again, I've sort of, I don't want to say I've really, the, like I've said before, the problem was, you can have your world title division, you can have your tag division, and you can sort of have your, your secondary singles. But after that, to have a tertiary division, you kind of have to choose. And at this point, I kind of chose the women the last few months over the over the cruiserweights. So here we are. And plus, all our really over cruiserweights are up doing other things. So there you go. But anyway, uh, Cuisine gets a big win, and post match he celebrates to a forty. So you know, still not the end of the world, but you know, sort of have to rebuild some things. Which again, it's part of the reason for doing split, so that other both the divisions can have some time. And then we go backstage where uh, Eric Bischoff is in his office and in comes the driver of Mike Awesome, Billy Kim, and Lance Storm along with April Hunter. And, you know, Awesome just sort of, it, it, like, just stands up to Bischoff and stares at him as Kim comes and says, look, it is disgusting that last night we were not on Great American Bash. We, me, Billy Kim, the greatest cruiserweight of all time, a former United States champion, the man who beat Ray Mysterio Jr., Multiple times. When I'm Storm, the greatest technical wrestler in this business. Mike Awesome, uh, the king of extreme. And what did you do with us? Absolutely nothing. We demand a match tonight to prove that we belong at the top of the card. But it's also by like, you guys understand, I don't, like, I'm in charge, but look at this mess. Look, you didn't make an impact. 
you you have to make an impact and make yourself known if you want the big matches on pay-per-view okay i do what's best for wcw you guys have matches now what's best for wcw but look i have a hold of it so tonight you guys come out there for the main event six-man match on nitro right here live and storm's like okay who's our opponents but she was like I never, you never asked for who your, who your opponents would be. Look out there, you'll fight who you fight, and let's see if you guys actually belong at the top of the card like you think. 82, it's all the little backstage promo set up our main event for tonight, which is Mike Awesome, Kidman, and Storm versus three of opponents. So, God knows who they are. Well, I know, but you guys know, at least not yet. Then we forward, next thing, which is backstage as the chosen few, along with new members simply joining. Oh, shit. That should be Jeff Jarrett, not Ric Flair. Son of a bitch. Wow. Okay, again, it's been a while since you've played this game, sometimes you make dumb mistakes like this. So let's pretend that's Jeff Jarrett. This still got a 95, which probably more than it deserves, but I mean, Jarrett's actually almost as over, if not more over than Flair. But let's pretend that's Jeff Jarrett. Anyway, Borash is backstage, and he, like, like asks for an explanation why, you know, simply John and Divine is beside them, and Jarrett substances, listen, slot nuts. I said I was looking for the best future talent for World Championship Wrestling. And unfortunately, things don't always work out. And of course, our former compatriot, Ray Gordy, God bless his soul, because like they do, they do a little fake, you know, uh, cross gimmick, um, got injured. But you have to move forward. Always moving forward. So I looked at the talent that was available here in World Championship Wrestling, and I found Simply Jordan Divine. He's a future Cruiserweight Champion, and God knows what else. But tonight along with the television champion, Mark Jindrak. He is going out there, and they're going to defeat a former tag team champions and former Heart Legacy and prove that they are the chosen few. 95, really good promo, and just sets up things for later tonight. A big tag match as somebody trying to find makes his first match as a member of the chosen few, teaming with the television champion, Mark Jindrak, against the Heart Legacy. Step 95, like I said, that should be Jarrett, not Flair, but again, what can you do? Actually book things correctly, but come on, who wants to do that? And then we have a quick little woman's match as Nikita Colt, uh, in a match that's so powerful wrestling and Oxus Crowdy defeats Natty Neidhart up from our Women Devs territory by 602 by submission in a 60. Nikita Colt gets a 61, Natty Neidhart gets a 36, and this is like, you know, Natty gets a little bit of like reversals of submissions, but in the end, Nikita Colt is a former champion and one of our top heels, and she just grabs Natty Neidhart, not even her like her finisher finish, just in a random like, um, so like a reverse, um, oh, what's it called? Um, some wacky, some wacky European submission that I'm sure Chris Hero has done before and just locks it in and Nanny Hart nowhere to go. She has to tap out and Colt gets the big submission and a big win for her. And then she takes the mic and says, once again, look at what I've done. I destroyed one of your pathetic blonde bond trails and proved that a woman like me should be at the top of professionalism. Gail Kim. You won last night. Congratulations. But look at you defeated. Some vapid-headed bimbo. You need to face, once again, the greatest technical women's wrestler on this planet. And I don't like you tap out, because I have ice in my veins. 62, and it seems like she's calling out Gail Kim for rematch for her Women's World Trail. As this gets to 62, and move forward. And we go backstage, where Jeremy Borash is with Alex Wright and Chavo Guerrero, and basically, you know, Chavo says, you know, he is disappointed last night that, you know, Reno and Cash left the tag team titles. But last night really wasn't about the tag team titles. It would have been nice to win them. But now they're focused on Jamie Noble and his bodyguard, that big palooka, Ebony Sable. Because we're not worried about the tag team titles anymore. Me and Alex, we want one thing. We want to take you on, Noble, bring on Ebony, and we'll prove that we're the better tag team and we deserve to be at the top of the division. And more importantly, we're going to get revenge for my Uncle Eddie. Barash asks where Eddie is, and Wright says, that's none of your business. That's family business, as they both walk away. 64, saw a little promo. You know, um, Chavo's not the best. You know, Alex Wright is not the best pure promo guy. But, you know, they're still decently over, and this moves forward that storyline. And then, oh, whoops, I should have not done these back, back to back. Oh, well, what can you do? Let's pretend, uh, yeah, actually, Wright and Chavo walk away. Keaton Sharp sort of barges his way past them. They share a little look, but then Sharp takes like takes the mind from Brash and says, "The path was not vindicated last night. 
But that's not because the path was wrong, but because the past was sabotaged. You see, I should have won the victory last night. I should still be the United States champion. But the World Championship officials are scared of the path. They're scared of how many people I could get behind me, or I could create a revolution in this company. So had they had to put Tajiri in front of me and give him every advantage to take the United States State title away from me. That's why. I will take that title back, and I will get back on the correct path. And then everyone can follow behind me, as they should. Sharp walks away, Barash sort of looks confused as we move forward, as this feud continues, as it gets a 69. Then we have a, basically, a quick squash match as Monty Brown kills Fit Finley in 322 with a pounce. This gets a 53. Brown gets a 70. Uh, Fit Finley gets a 45. You know, Fitly does a little bit of brawling because he's still Fit Finley, but in the end, Monty Brown is, you know, basically our future top guy, and he just wrecks Finley uh, with the, um, you know, with the pounce after a little bit of brawling and a big win for Monty Brown. Night after he got a big win over Dustin Rhodes. And afterwards, of course, Monty Brown and his uh, manager, Stevie Ree, celebrates as it gets a 65. Then we come back from commercial and Sh Shane Helms music hits and to a huge heel pop. Out come Shane Helms along with the tag team champions Reno and Cash, along with Cash's main squeezy and Roniel, and of course, Gagante is his bodyguard who hasn't been around a lot, but what can you do? And he says, yes, I know, you've all heard, read the news online, seen, seen the videos, and it's true, I am injured, as he points to his arm in a sling, but don't despair. The greatest United States champion of all time and the greatest wrestler in the world will not abandon you. Because you, you saw last night, I was on my way to defeating Rob Van Dam before luck got in my way and gave me this injury. So you see, Rob Van Dam may have not got the victory last night, but that does mean you're rid of Shane Helms. You see, because until I am clear to compete by World Championship Wrestling, Every single week, I will be here making sure that everyone does not forget that the greatest United States champion of all time and the future world champion who will save WCW from itself is here, along with my legacy, including the greatest tag team in this business right now, the Silver City Rollers. We will be here every single week, bringing you the truth of what's going on here in this business, no matter who likes it or not. So... Yes, we have the debut of the Shane Helms show, starring Shane Helms with Shane Helms, as in a big 100 promo. As yeah, Helms again last night again to get but behind the curtain. Obviously, Helms should have gotten the win over Rob Van Dam, but you know the game screwed me over. Well, not really screwed me over, but Helms got injured, so we got to get do this. But again, good thing to keep him on TV and moving forward. And then we come back from commercial from this, that, that, that basically our like our first hour promo as in a decent match, simply Johnny Vine and Merck Jindrak defeat the Hart legacy of Teddy Hart and Jack Evans when simply Johnny Vine defeats Teddy Hart with a handful of tights. So, you know, back and forth match, Mark Jindrak does a little bit of power stuff because he's the biggest guy. Uh, Divine hits, gets some high flying moves, Hart and Legacy do their, do their double team stuff. But then it all breaks down and Divine is able to roll up Teddy Hart, grab the grab the tights and get the one, two, three victory over the former tag team champions. As it's gets a 67, Mark Jindrak gets a 69, Simply Johnny Vaughn gets a 48, Jackman gets a 79, and Teddy Hart gets a 66. Good little win for the um, members of the um, chosen few. And then we move forward. And of course, out comes Rick Flair and Canyon, trying to get rid of revenge for getting beat up last night after they won over Jarrett and Jindrak, and that brings out Jeff Jarrett, and it's a big old brawl before WWE officials step in, but what was obvious was that, you know, on a 3-on-2 advantage, Flair and Canyon are great, but they can't beat back a 3-on-2 advantage, and they sort of, like, look at each other um, after after um, everybody is, you know, kept apart from each other. As this gets an 86, and can use the big former horseman feud. Then we're backstage with O'Hare and Palmer by themselves, and basically, you know, Palmer starts and says, yeah, you guys tried to take me out, but I'm still standing here. Give me an O'Hare. We're the future of this business. We will move forward and onward. And yes, you're right. Our business is not done with you. We made him be the Imperial, but let's be honest. He was always, he was always a man fighting for himself. Not for the fans, not for World Championship Wrestling. 
And that's what we're going to do. And that's why we're going to take you out, Deadpool. So if you want to match with us, fine. We're right here for you, Huckleberry. Or Sharpson, yes. Chuck's right. You see, we're the future shock to professional wrestling. Me and Palumbo, we are going to rise to the top together. And we are going to create greatness together. Messias, Morningstar, you see, you think you have the message? Well, here's our message. Next week, show up on Nitro, and we'll kick your ass from one side of the ring to the other. 85, good promo as you move forward, and it's time to go a big tag match for next week as it's O'Hare and Palumbo versus Messias and Morningstar. Then we have our, um, not really our semi event, but our, you know, second match from the top. As in a decent match, Jonathan Toro defeats Jason Jett in 744 by pinfall, um, in which, which gets a 58. And as they had pretty good chemistry, Toro gets a 61, Jet gets a 63. Of course, like no uh, storyline connected to this match, as Jet does his best, Beth, but out of nowhere, Toro hits his sort of like rolling elbow move, which I've forgotten the name I've given to it because it's been a couple months, and he just drills Jet with it out, sort of out of nowhere, and gets the 1 2 3 victory over a former tag team champion and a former cruiserweight champion, I believe. As like I said, it gets a 58, and Toro celebrates afterwards to a 65. Again, not the biggest thing in the world, but you know, just another match to give Toro some momentum. And then backstage, uh, Angel Fox is like complaining to like some random backstage room. Look, I'm still the top down woman in World Champions Wrestling, so why won't Bischoff give me a rematch? It's BS. I should be the face of World Championship Wrestling Women's Division. Because look at me. You think they want Gail Kim as the face? You think they want that? I see. I see bitch cult as the face? No. I should be. And, and I should be because look at me. I, I look like a star. I am a star. And we see Lucky James up, like come up and you know basically says tough night Angel. And Angel sort of like, looks over and sneers like what are you looking at? And Lucky fights back. I don't look back a woman that lost last night. And Angel says back like you haven't done nothing in months Lucky so at least I was on pay-per-view. You haven't done anything. So you shouldn't say much. Lexi says, yeah, only because you've stepped in front of where I should be. Remember, I'm a former women's champion too. Angel says, yeah, yeah, a lucky women's champion. I kicked your ass multiple times, so I can do it again if you get in my way. Lexi says, well, we'll see about that. So two heels being sort of nasty towards each other as this gets a 55 to sort of like, you know, build things up. Because again, multiple women should have storylines. Just like multiple men have storylines. Right, folks? Uh, let's try that again. And then, uh, Triumph are only for their points. First comes out Paul London to a pop, then Ray Mysterio Jr. to a bigger pop, and finally, Jeff Hardy to an even bigger pop, as this it's you know, basically everybody showing up to a 73 for a quick, quick one of the segment, and it's our main event of Triumph versus random high flying baby faces, to be perfectly honest. Which gets an 82. Okay, yeah, not, not, not on our best stuff. I mean, which sort of makes sense. As an about had great wrestling and good heat, the triumvirate of Billy Kidman, Mike Awesome, and Lance Storm defeated Jeff Hardy for Mr. Jr. and Paul London in 1329 when Billy Kidman defeats Paul London with Kid Crusher after April Hunter interfered. This gets an 82. Storm gets a 77. Mike Awesome gets an 84. Billy Kidman, because he's great, gets an 88. London gets a 75. Ray Jr. gets an 84. Jeff Hardy gets an 89. I should have set up a storyline for this because I almost guarantee that's why this wasn't in the mid 80s. Um, yeah, I mean, Hardy had some low morale, poor given for Ray Jr., but yeah, lack of social storyline is probably the big one. So probably would have got like the mid 80s, but again, back and forth match. Hardy, Ray Jr., and Paul Paul do their high flying stuff, trying to fight back. Awesome throws him around, Storm does some technical moves and a super kick. By the end, April Hunter gets involved, distracts Paul London as everything is breaking down. That's just enough for Kevin to in from behind with a low blow. Kid Crusher, 1, 2, 3, and a victory for the Triumph Crime And post-match, the, the fight continues. Ray Jr. hits a big uh, dive on Lance Storm on the outside. But unfortunately, for Jeff Hardy, Mike Awesome grabs him, finds him, and absolutely kills him with a, uh Awesome Bomb through a table at ringside. I'd say actually multiple tables at ringside. As Jeff Hardy takes a big stump bump as this gets an 87 and really puts over Awesome as just a pure mo the monster that he always has been. And then it's time, you know, as we get from commercial, we come back, and yes, 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 no, 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 Booker T's music hits to a big heel pop as still the reigning and defending WCW World Heavyweight Champion comes out, and he takes the mic and says, yes, yes, suckers, you're looking at still the man who beat Goldberg, who's beaten Eddie Guerrero, who's beat so many men, and proven 
that he is the man he should have been, the ace of world champion for, for so long, Saka. Because you're looking at a six time, six time, six time, six time, six time, six time world champion. And the man who is the man, the true man world championship beside my queen. And then, walk. Yes, walk hits the, it's, hits the EPA, and out comes Rob Van Dam to confront Booker T. And he basically says, look, Booker, we're tag partners for a little bit. We were friends. But you've obviously gone off the rails, man. After beat Shane Helms last night, I talked to Eric Bischoff, and he agreed. I'm the number one contender, man. So at Bash at the Beach, I'm going to kick your ass and take that world title from you because I'm Rob Van Dam. And there's nothing you can do about it, but Booker T says, Sucker, I beat you once, and I'll beat you again. Prove that I'm the man in the world. WCW, and you can do the whole, all half high moves you want. You can try to hit me with chairs. You can try to put me through tables. But I'm... There's nothing you can do. At the end of the night, it'll be still the world champion. Booker T, can you dig that? I'm just stare down as the show ends. As, yes, we got Bash at the Beach. Our main event is going to be Booker versus Rob Van Dam for the title in a big world title match. And we finish the show, and this got a 99 because of course it did, which gets an 87. Okay, so not quite as bad as I thought. That those that Shane Helm segment and this segment at the end really saved me because the rest of the show was not so great. I'm, that was really just a, uh, um, what's we're looking for, an angle heavy show saving me there. Because, like, again, the matches were building people up. Because uh, we got the view of Revolution next week, which will be a big thing. And, yeah, that'll actually be the next video. Will be the first um, episode of Revo Revolution. I mean, not, not the first episode of Revolution, but the first episode where it'll be Nitro and Revolution. And, again, I think I've said this before, we're doing this as one video, because why not? Um, let's see here. Let me see if those signings, any of these signings are... Um, spoiler. Well, Mike Awesome, what'd you screw up? Ah, man. Okay. I fight, I fight him three times. Honestly. Screw it. He just sent Jeff Hardy through a table and that'll be reason to suspend him in, 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 in character. So you get suspended. Oh, and he's happy about it. Okay, cool. Um, right, okay. Fun times. So, and if we look at Raw, uh, let's see here. Tea time of Steve Richards, William Regal, and Scott Hall defeated Bradshaw on TNA. Jericho won a squash. Uh, Trish Trash promo, Vince McMahon promo, Randy Orton promo, Shawn Michaels squash. Kurt Angle defeated Parker Holly, Brock Lesnar defeated Randy Orton in 96, and Big Show and Undertaker teamed up to take on Chris Benoit and Triple H in a 99. Of course they did. Um, so yeah. Oh, and Wildside had one of their big matches, which got a 56, which is interesting. Uh, so Travis Tomko defeated Ryan Drago, Chance Prophet defeated new uh, Dev Siding Matt Cross, uh, Tony Jones and Trevor Rhodes and Stone Mountain defeated Adam Ortiz, Claudio Casanoli and JC Daz, so some regens, Claudio and other fun stuff, which gets a 42. Ernie Todd defeated Ken Anderson, retained the Na NWA National Heavyweight Championship. We had Rick Michaels defeated MI Smooth. We had TNT defeat Chris Rambola and Kay Graves for the NWA World Tag Team titles, which is interesting. We had Prince Nana and Cassie Riley defeat Shannon Ballard and Marcus Militech with Regen to retain the Wildside Tag titles. And in the main event, Adam Jacobs defeated Lazarus and Tech Poland to retain the Georgia Junior Heavyweight Championship. So, yeah. Again, we brought some people up, so try to hurt them, but that's the point of the Death Fed, right? Anything else of note? Nope, not really. Um, so, again, to check out the, the um, sort of results from the last couple, from the last week or so. So, at the last weekly house show, Chance Prophet and Ken of Suzuki teamed up to beat Claudio Castellani and Ryan Drago. Still, everybody on the on the undercard. Uh, K. Grives defeats Sonyaki in a cage match. K. Grives is a regen, or not a regen, but a auto gen. Uh, Tony Jones defeated Rick Michaels. Marcus Militech defeated Travis Tomko. Tank Tolan defeated Shannon Ballard. Team Rave defeated Chris Rambola and Cassie O'Reilly. And Adam Jacobs defeated Keith Walker to retain the Georgia Junior Heavyweight title in 64. And then on the TV show, uh, really not much of note. 
So for our woman's dev fed, we had uh, Ariel P and Mischief. We had um, Chiara Lamilsa interview, Beth Phoenix and Ronnie Jonah interview, uh, Kim Nielsen slash Desire interview, Body Max interview, any social interview. We had Beth Phoenix and Ronnie Jonah defeated Miss Molly and Vanessa Harding and Becky Bayless and Tracy Brooks in a three which got a 43. Uh, looking at the like success, Roni Jonah and Beth Phoenix are getting there. Uh, now you know I heard Molly Palsaka and Lacey defeated Allison Danger, Bonnie Maxson, and Madeline Claire in a 52. So again, Allison Danger is getting 60s, Lacey is getting 60s in at least their home territory. And we had Annie Social defeating Nikki Rocks in a 54. And in the main event, Kim Nelson, otherwise known as Desire, defeated Cheerly Minnesota to retain the women's uh, title. So fun stuff. 52 solid show for them. And I think that was it. Was there anything else as far as like news that I wanted to see here? Uh, let's see here. Reset. June. Results. Let's see here. I think you guys would have seen a decent amount of this. Let's see here. Smackdown from last week was a main event by Shawn Michaels and Big Show between Triple H and Chris Benoit by Count and Ram 99 and other fun stuff. Let's see here. Anything else you guys might be interested in? Um, OVW is still doing CM Punk versus Spanky for the OVW Heavyweight Championship. We've got a 67. Justice, also known as you know, the Future of Bist, via Isaiah. Uh, Ricky Constantino, Bull Bikini, Feed Homicide, and Social Benjamin in 61. And let's see here. And HWA. John Cena is losing people names Ken Hedivan. Welcome to a very different 2004. He also, oh, yeah, Cena, he'll be fine. Maybe a little behind, but what can you do? And, yeah. And I think, yeah, that, that's about it from what you guys need to see as far as, like, uh, TV stuff. So, again, storylines, we've got uh, Beautiful Violence now, including Nikki Colt at a 62. The Monty Brown feuds at a 55. Booker now versus RVDs at an 86. Uh, the now the tag feud between Chavo and Wright versus Noble Nemedies at a 71. Uh, Darkest Volume, which is just Palumbo Morning Stars at an 80. European Invasion, which I'll probably have to rename, is at a 64. Horseman Air Emmer is at a 90. Uh, Jane Helms by himself at a 77. Vampiro's Van. Oh, okay. This should also be renamed because Vampiro is not a part of it, but the Macias O'Hare feud is an 82. And Sharp Series at a 76. So fun times. Um, merchandise wise, as we end the month, basically Goldberg, Canyon, RVD, O'Hare, Vampiro. So that'll be a uh, hurt when he leaves. Hardy, Colombo, Macias, Booker T, Ric Flair. Eddie Guerrero's out of the top 10, but also haven't really been using for the past month or so. And way down at the bottom is, of course, Bobby Heenan, Jerry Lawler, Sean Sajak, King and Sharp. Yeah. Which is okay because they're all heels. So who's like. Jack Evans is down here, but he's also making a decent amount. So fun, fun times. Um, but yeah, that's our show for at least tonight. We're moving on to Bash at the Beach. And again, getting 87 where, like, like again, the big people we had on the show, like, like we didn't have really bitty a top guy. Oh, well, okay, but Jeff Hardy and Ray. But beyond that, like, we had somebody Johnny Fine, we had Monty Brown in 2004, um, Nanny Nightheart, Tony Guzina all in matches and we still managed to get an 87 so like i'm not that bad you know hurt by that but again like you can sort of see people are not using like you know the fact you know prime right at a point that they're really top cut people and they were not they don't have a pay-per-view match and other stuff like that sort of proof that like you know we do need to split which is why we're doing it so again next week will be the first show we will be doing uh nitro and revolution all in one videos um but yeah that is it so i hope you enjoy this if you enjoy this go ahead and give it a, a like Comment below when you're enjoying and enjoying, and subscribe to the channel for lots of other TW21 content, including this and other stuff which I might or might not be going. But again, I'm still sort of beginning the roll up of doing this all again. But you know, that's it for now. So talk to you later and adios. Have a good one.